creaking doors, thumping pipes, and rusty nails make this farmhouse feel more like the set on an episode of Criminal Minds than a place you'd want to call home. That being said, a spoonful of disturbing charm is exactly what makes Yakov Budazov's Loretta a murder mystery worth exploring. In Loretta, you play as Loretta Harris, a housewife and self-proclaimed ornithologist living on a farm in the 1940s. The game opens with Loretta being visited by a private investigator named Frank Chambers. He says he's been sent from New York to look for your husband Walter, and what starts as a missing persons case quickly turns into a murder mystery you won't soon forget. When you launch the game, you're met with a few options. The PC version asked me which controller layout I was using, in my case a PS5 DualSense controller, and it gives you the option of two visual modes, color mode and noir mode. Color mode is the standard and recommended for a first playthrough, while noir mode gives the game a more, well, noir feel. Choosing noir mode also increases the game's overall difficulty. Autosaves in Loretta happen regularly, so I never felt like I'd lose a lot of time by taking a break. That said, gameplay involves a mix of walking and some interacting like you'd expect to find in a point-and-click adventure. However, there isn't much action to be had in Loretta. The times you need to do more than make a choice are few and far between, and are usually solved by repeatedly pressing a button. This makes dragging a body through a field or pulling a rusty nail out of your leg feel a bit more weighty, but doesn't add much to overall gameplay. Time spent in your house is broken up into a few different areas including the kitchen, bedrooms, and basement. There are multiple things to interact with, and they change throughout the story. Interacting with the moose head in the living room, for example, results in Loretta saying something different each time, and usually in disgust. The story is played out in a series of flashbacks that eventually catch up to the beginning of the game. Choices you make result in different outcomes, and could lead to one of the game's multiple endings. Feel like calling Margaret a homewrecker to her face? You're well within your rights. Just remember, every action has consequences, so it's important to think ahead. In one particular scene, I chose to pick up a harvesting scythe while talking to the sheriff. As you can probably guess, that didn't end well. I got shot and was immediately teleported to a few days prior where I had the option of choosing a different path. Loretta's story takes place in the late 1940s. In 1947, you and your husband Walter are forced to move from the busy city life in New York to a small town farm owned by his parents. Why you had to move isn't explained at the beginning, but does become more clear as the story progresses. Loretta is frequently haunted by grief from her past, on top of her husband's life of secrecy, and it gave me the feeling throughout my playthrough that she was starting to go a bit crazy. Not far into the story, you learn what's really happening. Loretta Lou Harris isn't the happy housewife she pretends to be. The game focuses mainly on Loretta, but other characters are introduced throughout the story. Most are easily forgettable or don't stick around long enough to leave an impact. I feel like more could have been done to explore these relationships, and it felt at times like characters were added just to be added. While choices matter to an extent, significant decisions are far less frequent and usually made for you. This gave Loretta the illusion of being a choose-your-own-adventure story, when in reality, it felt much more linear. That's not necessarily bad though. The story was enjoyable, if not a bit predictable, and I think that was the developer's goal. Throughout your journey, you'll encounter a few different types of puzzles. While most don't involve much more than rearranging ripped portions of a photograph or clicking words before they reach the center of the screen, the puzzles do give you a hint as to what will happen next. As a result, there wasn't much thinking involved in solving the game's bigger mysteries. Only one time did I have to stop and think, if I used this here, then I can do this other thing here. I would have liked to see more of that, so it felt like what I did really had an impact instead of watching a crime drama unfold. The playable scenes in Loretta are broken up into different zones, which you choose when prompted. Aside from a few moments, progression is linear, and the map screen tends to serve more as a here's what happens next feature than anything. There isn't a lot to say regarding inventory or menus. 
pushing options on the PS5 controller brings up a prompt asking if you'd like to quit. Pressing L1 or L2 opens up your inventory, which rarely has more than a few items in it. Loretta forces you to use an item if it's needed at a particular time, and it's usually shortly after the item is picked up. This makes checking your bag feel much less important, since it's basically a reminder of where you're at in the story. The music in Loretta isn't particularly memorable, but does add a feeling of unease, particularly in the game's darker moments. Sound effects are loud and sometimes surprising, and do add to the creepiness factor. Loretta is a fun and often disturbing story of what happens when you try to bury the truth. Choices matter, and each comes with its own set of consequences. And while the puzzles and active gameplay are limited, the game doesn't overstay its welcome. Gritty locations, haunting sound effects, and a seriously messed up narrative make this an adventure I'd be happy to play again. And maybe next time I won't die quite as fast. Noisy Pixels giving Loretta a 7 out of 10. Noisy pixel.